Hey, Steve Mignani here at Burnison Auto Wrecking in Burnison, Massachusetts, doing the junkyard crawl with something kind of cool and something really big. This is a 1979 Ford E250 Super Van. Now, the term Super Van was first applied to Ford vans in 65, 6, and 7, and that meant they had a sort of caboose added onto the tail. Well, this one has that as well. But before we get to that, we gotta remember, this is the third generation Econoline, the first of its kind to arrive in 75 with body on frame construction. Basically a Ford pickup truck, full frame with a van body on it. These things were truly heavy duty vehicles. This one here is an E3 250, has the eight lug wheels. I mean, heavy duty suspension on this one. And when it says club wagon, you're talking about a people hauler versus a cargo van. And something kind of cool here, look at this duddy by Duddy Westboro. This is Duddy Ford. Now there's a time when every dealership would add their name to the vehicle, but eventually people started to realize when they drilled the holes in the vehicle to rivet or screw their name on there, eventually rust would form because that bare metal in New England would start to corrode. So people said, hey, don't put that on my vehicle. So they came up with adhesive backed dealer nameplates and solve the problem. This is an old school, 1979. Now, Duddy was one of the leading Ford dealers in New England, in Worcester, also a Duddy Toyota. I think they're still around. But anyway, this is 1979. This, I believe, is the first year for the square headlights on Econolines, round ones in 75, 75, 6, 7, 8. But again, this is kind of weird. The halogen light, this one here has basically fallen apart. The glass outer, by Phillips has delaminated right here. We can see the reflector and there's the halogen bulb inside, which you don't want to touch, but you know what? It doesn't matter now. Kind of weird to see this thing fall apart like that. That's not by design. These are supposedly sealed for life. Well, nature can degrade anything. Now the beauty of the third gen Ford Econoline vans was its out front design as Ford called it, which meant of course it had this snout. We've talked about this before in these videos. And if you haven't seen those videos, we got about three or four of them that talk about this third gen Ford van. They're pretty advanced. Uh, the whole punchline was, that by moving the engine forward in the frame, the interior it was possible for the passenger and the driver to easily work around the engine doghouse to move into the back. And it was more like a car in many ways. Uh, this one here, we can see the factory Ram Air. Now, if this was a GTO with Ram Air, we'd be talking big bucks. But the thing is, in the quest for fuel efficiency and engine efficiency, cold air induction became standard fare. This little hallway here feeds through under the battery tray into this, which would then feed to the air cleaner right there. So again, uh, high performance isn't just about horsepower, it can actually also improve fuel efficiency on an engine. This would have probably had a 351, perhaps a 460, it's long gone. But again, the beauty of the, uh, the forward, uh, the out front design was open in the hood and the engine's kind of right there readily accessible for servicing. Now this one again is a very austere one. There's no two-tone paint, not even chrome bumpers. These are painted bumpers, which were standard fare. You paid extra for the bright look chromed bumpers. Uh, the rear view mirrors are Ford items right here, very much uh, necessary because these are long, these are huge vehicles. I think the only vehicle as long as this is the modern Jeep Gladiator pickup truck, which is a long vehicle. But these things here ride on a 138 inch long wheelbase. And because it's a super van, it has an extra 20 inches added to the back, but more on that in a second. Now we look inside this one and this is a bare bones basic one. And we can see that on the door panels here, there's no vinyl, there's no carpeting, nothing. Just metal and hard plastic, very austere manual windows inside, rubber floor mats, no carpeting. Uh, standard equipment was these uh, bucket seats, which is kind of cool, but even the headliner on this thing, Shane, I'll reach around and look at this. The headliner is this like pressed plaster, you know, cardboard kind of fiber stuff right there. Very austere. This one wasn't automatic as most of these were, uh, but again, pretty basic stuff. But there's that doghouse, the engine doghouse flipped over. But again, by moving the engine so far forward in these things, it made it a lot easier for driver and passenger to walk around, get in the back of these things without having to open a door and go outside. Speaking of doors, this one does not have the optional sliding side door, and there's a reason for that. These are simpler, the opening door is like this, but the thing of it is, this has a wider 42 and a half inch wide opening. So if you had to load things like this uh, Lincoln welder or the diesel, the Caterpillar diesel on the other side of it, uh, this opening here again is 42 and a half inches wide. Now, if you had the sliding door, well, that's only 40.3 inches because the door stops here negating this much. We'll see that on another future video. But again, the sliding side door actually compromised some of the cargo opening because the door itself didn't go all the way back. It stopped here. Still lost about three inches of width. So for true utility, you wanted the, the, the barn door 
type right here. Now this one here, the seats are long gone, and this has been uh, turned into a storage unit, been relegated here in the junkyard. And again, the beauty of vans and buses and school buses and campers in the junkyard is that there are impromptu sealed storage lots, really, with the glass and stuff, rain, snow does not get in. And so a lot of times you'll see vans like this turned into storage units. But again, we look to the back of this thing, and here is what made this a super van. This is the 20-inch long section. Now, if you can look at it here, this is the stock end cap right here. This ordinarily goes right there. Well, by adding this 20-inch sliver between all the way up, this thing becomes the super van. And cargo capacity on this thing goes to 329 cubic feet from 295 cubic feet, thanks to this. And it, with full seating, 15 passengers are possible. Now here's the thing, Ford launched this in 1978, this cargo, the super van in the third gen. But here's the thing, Dodge did it first. It's a fact. Now this is a 1978 Dodge dealer brochure, but as early as 1971, you could get a thing called the maxi van right there. This again, is a 1978, a little later, but again, the maxi van had this massive tail added on. 1971, seven years later, Ford did it with this. Now we gotta to remember too that the maxi van kind of copied Ford's first Econoline of 1965, six and seven and eight, or six and seven, which did have the tail that was added on. So Ford kind of uh, went into remission for a while, Dodge picked up the ball and ran with it, and Ford caught up again in 78. Now one thing that's kind of weird about these is we can see how the federally mandated side marker light is here, but what's that? What, what, what's that thing doing? Well, that's a block off because the same stamping was utilized for the standard length body and the extended one. So instead of having a special piece without this stamped into it, they just put a block off plate on it. And again, mass producing vans was about monetizing and making money and uh, increasing the profit margin. And to come up with a stamping here that didn't have this opening just because of aesthetics or aesthetics, wouldn't have happened. So again, here we have uh, just the shortcuts, the band-aids, and whatever it takes to put these things to production for the least possible money and the greatest value for the customer. So again, this one being an E250 would have had a Dana 70 rear axle underneath here, massive leaf spring right there with looks like nine leaves on it. And again, this is a body on frame, whereas Dodge and GM C and Chevrolet vans at this time were still unitized. And we can see right here, there's that frame sitting down and the body sits on top. So that's rugged stuff. That's basically Ford Super Duty pickup truck frame underneath this E250. So that's the story of how Ford revisited the super van and made this a massive cargo hauling monster. Now this one's a stripper, it's pretty austere. Tomorrow we'll check out another Ford E-Series van that's a Chateau, the other end of the luxury scale. You don't want to miss it. In the meantime, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Max YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. We'll see you again tomorrow for more Junkyard Crawl.